we're going to show you the pagan roots and origins of the Christmas tree. And that the Christmas tree, the concept of putting things under a tree and decorating it, is not new and it goes back a long way. It goes back all the way back to the Old Testament when the Israelites will be, were becoming pagan. Now the common passage that is used to prove that Christmas trees are pagan is Jeremiah chapter 10, which Amen to that. I mean, Jeremiah 10 proves that Christmas trees are pagan. However, Jeremiah chapter 10 is not the only passage or verse that proves that Christmas trees are pagan. I'm going to show you some other scriptures that prove that this practice of decorating a tree or putting objects under a tree is pagan. Okay? 2 Kings 17, 9 to 10. 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 9 to 10. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. And look at this. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. So they were setting up images and putting them under every green tree. A green tree, which is, you know, evergreens, green trees. Obviously, you know, they might not have had evergreens, but they were putting all idols, graven images, under a tree. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 4 to 5. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Against whom do you, sorry, against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are you not the children are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood, inflaming yourselves with idols? under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys, under the cliffs of the rocks. So again, they're putting idols under green trees, just like how people put presents under the tree. It's pagan. Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 13. Then shall you know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, and all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, a place where they did sweet savior to all their idols, or did offer sweet savior to all their idols. So again, you see this thing, are putting idols under trees, under green trees, under a thick oak. So we see again this concept of putting items under a tree, as a form of basically worship is pagan. Now the infamous Jeremiah chapter 10. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 2 to 4. We're going to see this concept of not only putting things under a tree but also decorating a tree and putting things under it is pagan. Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 2 to 4. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Is that not what Christmas trees are? You cut a tree out of the woods, you decorate it, you hammer it down so it can't move? Exactly what Christmas trees are. It is pagan. According to the Bible, this practice of decorating trees and putting items underneath it is pagan. But I'm going to show you an interesting article on the pagan roots of the Christmas tree. It's very simple. Just Google the pagan roots of the Christmas tree and lots of results come up. So I'm going to read you this article uh, proving that Christmas trees are pagan. Okay, let's get right into it. Okay, here is the article, The Pagan Origins of the Christmas Tree. So I'm just going to zoom in right here says, dating back centuries before Christ, cultures bought, brought evergreen trees, plants, and leaves into their homes upon the arrival of winter solstice, which occurs in the northern hemisphere between December 21st and December 22nd. Although, although the specific practices were different in each country and culture, the symbolization was generally the same to celebrate the return of life at the beginning of winter's decline. Egyptians particularly valued evergreens as a source of life, a life's victory over death, they brought uh, green date palm leaves into their homes around the time of winter solstice. The Romans had a public festival called Saturnalia, which lasted one week beginning on December 17th and included a variety of celebrations around the winter solstice. Curi curiously, the Roman winter solstice was marked on December 25th of the Julian calendar. 
Uh, these celebrations are, are thought to have merged with pagan practices of hanging mistletoe and burning of the Yule log. So the mistletoe is also pagan as well, by the way. In Britain, the Yule log was originally seen as a magical amulet and eventually made into the hands of Father Christmas. Uh, in Italy, the Yule log is still burned for the Fiesta di Capo in Catalonia. I think I'm saying that right. The log is wrapped in a blanket until Christmas Eve when it is unwrapped and burned for the custom of the Fur Kager El Tio. And in Serbia, families bring the Yule log, known as the Bajnak, I guess I say it, into their homes on Christmas Eve to be burned along with prayers to God to bring happiness, luck, and riches. Druid priests in Great Britain also used evergreen plants and mistletoe in pagan ceremonies, and the mistletoe plant was a symbol of the birth of the god, uh, oh, of a god. Celtic druids and Norsemen of Scandinavia also used mistletoe in a mysterious ceremony that was just after winter solstice, or after the winter solstice. In the mid-1500s, Germans began using evergreen trees as a symbol of hope for the coming of spring. This practice is likely to have gradually evolved from the pagan rituals of the past and merged with the celebration of Christmas, leading to the tree's Christian beginnings, quote-unquote Christian. It's really just Roman Catholic, if you look at the histories of it. It's just the Roman Catholic Church tried to paganize or Christianize paganism, essentially. But And there's, there's other information, but this is just, you know, simple stuff right here. But there you go, the pagan origins of the Christmas tree. So that this practice of decorating a tree, you know, putting things under it, it goes back before Christ. It goes back to paganism. So Christmas trees are pagan. So don't, if you're a Christmas, again, remember, remember, what the, remember what God said? Learn not the way of the heathen. Yeah, don't learn the way of the heathen. Don't uh, bring in a Christmas tree because you're learning the way of the heathen. So there you have it. The Christmas trees are pagan and it is the way of the heathen. And remember, God said, learn not the way of the heathen. By bringing a Christmas tree into your home, decorating and putting items underneath it, idols underneath it, you are learning the way of the heathen. That's violating scripture. Christmas trees are not biblical. And nowhere in the Bible did Christ or the apostles ever celebrate Christ's birth or observe his birth. Okay? That's not scriptural either. Uh, nowhere in the Bible is there nativity scenes or that kind of stuff. It's all, it's all Catholic paganism. It's just Roman Catholic repackaging of paganism. So don't don't learn the way of the heathen and just if you want to celebrate Christ's birth, just you know, just don't you know how to do it on December twenty fifth, because that's when a lot of false gods were born. Just you know, obviously it's not biblical to celebrate it, it's not required. But if you want to celebrate his birth, do it any day. You know, don't you don't have to wait till December twenty fifth and you don't have to have a nativity scene or do all this other pagan stuff. And you don't have to have a Christmas tree either. It's all paganism. It's all just Roman Catholic paganism. The Roman Catholic pagan church tried to Christianize paganism. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.